G'day, I'm Scott and this is my YouTube channel, Scott Grows an Avocado Tree. On this channel, my goal is to grow an avocado tree from seed to the point of bearing fruit whilst documenting the process. Over the last three and a half years of having this channel, I've been asked to do a plant tour. But I haven't until today. I've spent the last month filming the footage you'll see today. Why has it taken all month? Well, if you've watched this channel for a while, you'll have noticed that I like time lapses. A time lapse is when you capture images at intervals to be played back many times faster than in real time. This allows us to observe things that happen too slowly for us to notice with our naked eye. Plants are living things, and whilst we don't know it by watching them in real time, they move. Some move too slowly to notice in these time lapses, but some do. I set my camera focusing on different plants for a day or so to see if we could catch any movement, so we can catch their secret lives. I didn't have time to capture every single one of my plants, and so you won't see all of them, but you'll see my favourites at least. So sit back, relax and enjoy my house plant tour in time lapse form. Let's begin by starting in the study. We don't have as many plants in here as in other rooms in the house. This is a south facing window, which if you're in the Northern Hemisphere is the same as your north facing window. So this room gets no direct light, but we can push for bright indirect light. Here we have a small Monstera deliciosa that desperately needs to be repotted and a lime pothos. Neither of which are doing a lot of moving at the moment. It's a little harder to see in this shot, but there's also a Monstera adenzonii trailing from the bookshelf. I chopped it recently to take propagations, and it's starting to push out new growth in different places now, which is really pleasing. To the left of where those plants were, we have my favourite plant in the collection, my Monstera Deliciosa Thai Constellation. I managed to time my time lapse taking well enough to capture it unfurling its latest leaf. I received this plant as a two-leafed rooted cutting about 18 months ago, and I am floored by its fantastic growth and new leaves. Just check out that new leaf that is unfurling. Moving on now into the living room. I haven't captured every plant in every terrarium, but I'll show you a few of the shelves. The window in this room is north facing, which means it's the brightest room in the house. But on the shelves, the plants get medium or low light. But my fiddle leaf fig gets bright indirect light where it is, and it is still very small. I've had it over a year now, and it's put out six or seven new leaves in that time, but it's very slow and it will need a repot soon. I water it only every couple of weeks after letting it sit in dry soil for a week or so. And then next to that we have my Pilea peperomioide, or Chinese money plant. I've had it for around three years and have taken quite a few pups off that have grown into their own individual plants, which are great for giving away as gifts. This one gets some direct light and I need to admit that I watered it before I captured this footage. You can see it regaining turgidity here. I made a video specifically explaining what happens when a plant regains turgidity as you can see here, or when it reinflates after being watered. Check that out with the link in the description. On the shelf above is a Monstera adenzonii. I'm keen for this to continue to trail, as it's already started doing. Over to the shelves around my TV, down here is my Philodendron Rojo Congo. I love the dark red of the petioles and the deep green leaves. The tripod was bumped at some point, but you can still see it does some small movements throughout the day. Here's a Tetrasperma and a Calathea ornata. Our humidity in this house is probably a little low for Calathea to be super happy, but it's still putting out new leaves and doing its fantastic dance. I love Calathea for their nictinastic movement, and I made a video going into nictinastic movement, and there's a link in the description. But over the course of the day, they have a rhythm, and they move, and I just think it's wonderful. Look at it go. We also have Luke's X-Wing keeping them company. This next shelf is the I don't really know what to do shelf. We have another Pilea peperomioide, which I need to repot because despite never watering it, it's been waterlogged ever since it was gifted to us 
a few months ago due to it being planted in sphagnum. I'm a little concerned it's got root rot and it probably hasn't been in a sunny enough position. And behind it is another Monstera deliciosa which also desperately needs repotting and there are a few miscellaneous propagations as well as some plants which were going to be used in terrariums but we never got around to it so they're just waiting here for now. On this shelf I have a couple of avocado seeds growing in different vessels as well as a devil's ivy grown in a cute little avocado pot. Behind it, there's a philodendron squamiferin and a philodendron birkin, and also a neglected begonia maculata. I have another one which I haven't actually shown in this video, which is doing much better. <laughs> Moving away from the shelf, but in the same space, is this fantastic Monstera deliciosa. This is my largest indoor plant at the moment, and isn't it a beauty? It has got a little bit of scale, which I'm treating and I'm hoping I can get on top of, but it's pushing out new growth and is very happy. I only repotted it a couple of months ago, so it's still growing into its new pot, but check out those big lovely leaves. This is a super easy plant to care for too, and I like it a lot. On this shelf we have a Hoya. It's probably a Hoya australis. I'm still a huge newbie when it comes to Hoya, and it wasn't specifically labelled when I bought it. And next to it is a Dragon's Tail. These are both my most recent additions to my collection, and I've only had them for a couple of months. On our dining table, we have some terrariums and a variety of Hawthoria. You'll notice that its edges are a little bit blunt. That's due to one of our cat chewing off the ends of it, which they seem to have curbed in the time since buying the plant, but of course the ends won't grow back. We have quite a number of terrariums in this house. My wife and I both enjoy creating them and they're super easy to maintain. This one specifically is my latest creation. I made only last month during a terrarium party, which we hosted. The plants inside are moving as well. You can really see that polka dot plant doing its thing in there. Fantastic. The dinosaur skeleton in the foreground is also a nice addition, I think, and it even glows in the dark, which is really difficult to capture clearly, and so I haven't included it in this video. <laughs> Still in the same space, we have a small collection of cacti. We have a couple of varieties of what are probably ladyfinger cacti and a monkey tail. The ladyfingers are very slow growing. The one on the left in the bigger pot we've had for 10 years now and was actually the first birthday present I gave my then girlfriend, now wife. The monkey tail is a more recent addition, buying that this year. When I set this time lapse up, I wasn't expecting to see any movement. So I was quite surprised to see all the movement that monkey tail is doing. Over in the kitchen is another one of my older plants. This is my Calathea lancifolia, and it's around four years old. And talk about movement. This is the queen of nyctonastic movement in my house. It's dark leaves with the purple undersides open right out during the day and retract into a vertical position overnight. Just fantastic. Now in the bedroom, we have this bookshelf with a few plants on it. All my Hartley philodendron varieties are here, starting on the left with the classic Hartley philodendron, then the Brazil, and then the Mykins. I love these classic philodendrons. They're easy to care for and good growers. There's also some kind of aloe on the top shelf, which probably doesn't get enough sun where it is, a Hawthoria on one of the shelves, and a pink Syngonium. It's nice having plants in every room of the house, including the bathroom. Bathrooms typically have great humidity for plants, and as also has a skylight, making it perfect for this Hartley philodendron, philodendron mykins, and this devil's ivy. I watered them just before taking this time lapse, and you can see them regain their turgor pressure. Just lovely. And you might be wondering now, considering this channel is called Scott Grows an Avocado Tree, where are the avocado trees? Well, I have actually come to avoid keeping avocado trees inside once they are trees. I'm finding I can't cater to their lighting needs when they're inside. I do, however, have these ones on the Avocado Lagoon. These are the ones we're following for our Avocado Diary series, and just look at them grow. The rest of them are outside, which, as it's now summer, it's too hot for my camera to take a time lapse without overheating within 20 minutes, so you'll just have to enjoy this regular footage. And that will do it for my plant tour for today. Thank you so much for watching this video. I had a great time making it. As I said at the start of the video, it took me a while. I did it over November and December of 2021. It takes a while to capture all of these time lapses, but I am really happy watching all of them back to see what my plants are doing. Throughout this whole process, I gained a deeper appreciation of my plants, and I hope that you gained a deeper appreciation for your plants. 
I think it's very easy to think of plants as these stationary things, they're a bit like objects, these decorations, but watching them move over the course of a day in a time lapse, most of them, was really interesting and I think it just emphasised that they are these living things and they're busy, they're doing things, they're moving and they're alive and I just think that's really wonderful. If you'd like to see more videos from me, make sure you're subscribed to Scott Grows and Avocado Tree. I'd also really be interested to hear what you thought about this video. I spent a lot of time on it, so I'm interested to see if you thought that watching a house tour in the form of time lapses is a good idea. If you had a favourite one, a favourite plant, or something that surprised you, I'd love to know in the comments below. I'm also on Instagram if you'd like some more plant related and avocado content from me at Scott Grows and Avocado Tree. Thank you once again for watching, and I will see you next time. Scott Grows and Avocado Tree. Scott Grows and Avocado Tree. Scott Grows an avocado tree, Scott grows an avocado tree.